Ghost. Morning, guys. Welcome back to the channel, and thanks for clicking on. Uh, I am away to get the rubber duck uh, for Corrigan's today. Um, you can see I've done a temporary repair on my broken ramp. Uh, good that fixed bit of checker steel there. Uh, four bolts. Now I measured the size of wood I need, plus the floor here, and I've sent it away. And I'm hoping to get a price back today. We'll wait and see. But I think that for a Monday, we're going to get this rubber duck. There might be another couple of machines to go collect to bring back to the yard uh, to go down the road later on in the week. But then I was going to grab my flat and go do some logs, especially because the weather's good, there'll be no slipping sliding. But I better get cracking. Now I picked up this machine when it was brand new and it came with every extra on it plus all the end coin attachments, the trailer, the lot uh, and every time I move it there's, I've always got to take everything with it, it takes ages to do but luckily I've only got the Molsher head because it was just used on a hydro job but as you can see it's got buttons for buttons I've loaded ducks before but I've never loaded this one this machine always gives me a bit of moot because it is that, you know, all the toys are on it. And I always take high value in everyone's machines that I move. Uh, I don't know what it is about this one. I think it's because it's like even the spotlights and the light bar and every bit of it has got something expensive you can touch. Try to work out how this all works. Okay. Absolutely stunning view up here. I'm quite lucky where I live because most of the places I do go are all stunning views. Now the question I get asked uh, <laughs> very frequently is, how do you know how to drive all these machines? Am I trained? Have I got my tickets? Uh, no, I actually uh, don't exactly have all my tickets and most of my stuff is just uh, experience and trial and error. If you don't know a certain machine, I usually know someone I can phone and ask them or maybe the operator. Um, anything from codes, dead man switches, because uh, some machines can be totally different. Like that one there, it wouldn't start, could work out why it wouldn't start, had the right code. Phoned Alan, the operator, and he says, No, no, there's a wee switch on the side of the steering column, flick that all the way forward, and then it should start. Just wee things like that, uh, and trial and error. I have seen myself sometimes it takes me 15 minutes to load the machine, but it's taken me 45 minutes to figure out how it starts or moves. Uh huh. Uh, that is either my good pal Nipper McLean, who restores wagons. You would have seen him on the Trucker Tim's YouTube channel, uh, or that is Trucker Tim himself. I'm not too sure. I'm just giving him a message. I know he's up this way, but I think he's got his lorry because he's picking up Amy's uh, one four three. But I've sent him a message to see if that's him, like, or it might be Nipper. If it's Nipper, he's got to go to my house and pick up a model. And if he had time, I'd like him to look at my one four four and get it going. Well, I didn't want to save him, but I was running close on fumes there, but I'm now going to get some diesel. I was bloody raging, I was coming out of town and a Tesco's lorry put me right off. Look the scrub on that tyre. Or well, all of them. Going in and out of Fort William, the road's very narrow, and no matter if you're on your side, there's people coming onto your side with the back end of their trailers and putting you off like. You've got no option to bloody touch the bloody care, and I hate it. Now this machine, I've always had a bit of issues getting it chained properly. See, because I don't have any bed hooks, so I can't hook into the bed. I have to go off the side, just because of the angle. From there, I don't want to bend this flap too much, that bar there. And it's the same at the front. And it's got absolutely nothing underneath to chain it from underneath here. It's just front and back, and there's too many things in the way, so you're trying to like, damage while keeping it secure. I think about 500 litres in this. Fuel is the biggest expense in transport. Oh, it's killing us. 
Mind you, it has came down. It did go to a record high there, but it has came back down, but still bloody sore like. Right, I'll get myself packed and tidied up and go get a load of logs. Right, now that we've tipped that, back to the yard, grab a flat trailer and see if I get a load of timber. Right, as we back in the yard, swapped to my flat trailer, got a load of logs to go get. Mad Blue, IBC, my new one has just arrived. It sickens me, Ad Blue. I've spent five grand on my truck this year repairing my Ad Blue system. And Ad Blue used to be 28 pence a litre to buy in bulk. Now it's like 90 pence a litre nearly. Well, not as much as that, but it's no far off it. And it's just an extra expense. Whew. Just an extra expense. My lorry uses anywhere between 90 and 120 litres a week. Sometimes 150 litres, depending on what work we're doing. How busy we are. Now this is the benefit of my setup. Like I said, I've got my loader trailer and I've got my flat trailer. Now, usually I'm very busy with the loader trailer. Things are a bit quieter right now in the building trade and people don't have much money to spend on buying machines and doing builds, etc. So it is what it is. Plenty of work up and down the road, but I'm trying to stay up here now. Uh, but any time I can always just jump straight into my flat. Now, both my trailers are bought and paid for, so it's not like one sitting there and I'm going, oh, I'm spending like uh, so many hundreds of pounds or a thousand pound a month in finance and that sitting there not making me any money so it doesn't really bother me um, I do prefer my loader work much prefer it but flat work is just on and off of the way you go just got a popped in see Amy's truck getting picked up and Nipper and Trucker Tim they're taking it back down the road Right, back to work. Get a load of four nines for the sawmill. Four nines for the mill, tip that. Come back down for another load in the morning. Uh, I just had a phone call from my pal Andy Efferson. Uh, I think Jamie's got a broken down lorry up the Sky Road, so they've asked me to go collect it and bring it back down the road for them. Uh, but they'll have to wait till midday and tomorrow afternoon by the time I get it down. I'll go do a load in the morning, then go get it tomorrow afternoon. Pretty sure that job's on. Right, that's me getting tipped at the mill. I have the go-ahead in that job of price to collect the recovery. It's only a seven and a half tonner. I thought it was a six wheeler, but it's only a seven and a half tonner. The boy's staying up there tonight, so I think we'll do a run in the morning, and then I'll go grab that in the evening or the afternoon. Yeah. Right, that is me back at the yard, and I act. Don't tell me that's an air leak. Oh, that's no, just a cab set on. So I've got a wee bit of time, I'm going to get myself uh, organised, paperwork, etc. And I'm probably just going to do a, a wee quick workout. And now I do not have a gym, I have time to go to a gym. So I've just been throwing a tyre around the yard. Now, like I said, I do not have the time to go to a gym. But, oh, I'd go for a run, I do pull-ups up the bar when I'm in the woods, push-ups, etc. But now this new thing, I've got a tyre. Well, in fact, I've got loads of tyres, so I might as well put some use to them. Now this may look easy, which it is for the first few flips. But once you've gone to one side of the yard, back to the other, it starts to get tiring. And I try to do it four times. Oh, right, now that I've done that. I'm going to get my dinner and probably said do a bit of editing and other things and plan the rest of the week out. Showered, fed, bed, I'm getting up at four in the morning. In fact, quarter to four in the morning. Ah, uh, Just going to lie here, do a wee bit more tinkering and the editing and then crack on with tomorrow. 
Have a good wee day. Oh, morning. Oh, I'm not too tired to be honest, even though I didn't sleep much last night. No, I sleep, sleep much these days anyway because I'm quite stressed out right now. But you can't just roll over. Need to get on with it. The things are quite stressful right now. And today I want a bit of peace by myself. Which I usually get, be the lorry driver. Turn on my nice lights. The Reg, SN65. I'm already in. I've got my first bunk on nearly. I says I'll take this back to the yard, grab a loader. My dad's just going to run for coils for this week. Keep him busy, he's plenty of experience. When I mentioned earlier this morning, I'll be a bit stressed. Uh, I like to keep my content as real as it can be and there's a few people that aren't paying right now and they're well overdue on their invoicing and I've got people I'm due money and I'm trying to like you know it's not that I should be able to pay them I've got plenty of money due in it's just you're trying to get people to pay you and they're like oh and how it goes is they'll say oh yeah you're on the pay for this Friday they should just pay it there and then and then the Friday comes and oh such and such has left the office we'll sort out next week all oh, be this and you get all that kind of crap and you find big companies are struggling and it's the wee guys they start to affect and we all fall away and we don't have the money to chase them for the money and then they carry on as usual whether there's guys like us we suffer it so yeah I, I've got my tyre account my parts account, uh, fuel bills, there's quite a lot and I've got more money to go out and you're like, ah, it is quite difficult. And you start getting a few sleepless nights. But I've been here before, I've been here before in worse positions and I've not been beat yet. It just, mm. Yeah, to say I could hide from the stress would be a lie. Right, came back to the yard to drop my trail, to grab my loader. I'm waiting to get tires, but just quickly, I'm going to give the lorry a wee blast off. Just because she's covered in dust and stew, we can't have that. Now, all I'm only going to just do is, I'm not going to get a brush on because I don't have time, I've only got uh, a few minutes. All my chemicals I use are supplied to me by Auto Perfect, Calm and his team. Top notch, this stuff smells amazing. Uh, and I have my own cleaning product with them as well. Now, this is just going to sit on there for 5-10 minutes. Wash it off, just give it a quick, it's just to get the dust and the worst off it. Into the low order and let's get cracking. I just like to look presentable at least. Don't have time for a full uh, scrub and wash, bucket and everything because I do need to get going. So. Aye, go give a little pair for the wee follow. This video is not sponsored by them, by the way. I genuinely like this product and use it. Oh, a thousand times better. Right, loader, gonna have a cup of tea off my mum. Let's get cracking. Right, we're making really good time, uh, everything's got the plan. I'm just about to meet Dino to get a new set of boots put on my drive axle. Uh, I used to work with Dino actually. Now, I've had a bad run of tires lately uh, on the trailer and then I had to do the unit and now I've got to do four on the, the drive. Now, I run Bridgestones, but Bridgestones have been creeping up in price more and more. Mitchell have held a wee bit stronger in their prices, keeping them down a bit. And Mitchell and more, I'm just trying to go top of my head, we're about £580 per tyre. Bridgestone were £400 per tyre. And Mitchell and Remixes were, uh, were they £3,850 or something a tyre. 
Now, I'm going to try the mixture of remixes to give them a go. Now, if you don't know what a remix is, a remix is a recycled tyre, so they've re-skinned the tyre. And, fun fact, they are the only uh, Michelin product that's made in the UK is a Michelin remix tyre. Got to give them a go, test them out and see how they do. Uh, the last Bridgestones are gone. They've done all right, but mm, you always check to see what other options there are to get the best, you know, push out your wear and tear. Oh, man. The problem is with doing off-road work, you don't get the full use of a tyre, so I used to cut my tyres and go up and down the motorway, but you never get to that stage. Most likely when they start getting low, the tyres just start to rip and deteriorate, so when they do start getting about, you know, under 10 mil, under 8, you, you keep your eye on them because they just start to destroy them. You can have a good tyre in the morning, but then by the evening, it'll just start ripping itself to bits, so you need to keep your eye on them. Now these are Remo tyres, so the casings are, this is probably their second life and then they take them back and they put a whole new skin of rubber on them and re-carve them out, so like a brand new tyre. I, I can't mind, is it two or three times they'll recycle a tyre? I do know they do three, I don't know if it's four, but I think when it goes to the fourth time or third time, I'd have to double check that. That's what, uh, it's not called a Mitchell. Dino wants to be crippled by the time he's 50. Hero's crippled by the time he's 35, mate. Your well, tattoo finish on your neck. Has that been 10 years? Oh, it's been longer than 10 years. <laughs> I'm too busy doing your fucking tyres. <laughs> Right, your question why Dino's putting the tyre back on the rim, back to front, is so he doesn't scratch the front of my Durabrite. That's care and attention, isn't it, Dino? Yeah. He's even put a lovely mat down for it as well. You're the only person that gets that treatment, mate. See, that's because we used to work together. We don't bicker as much anymore. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, because I value my knees. Now this is what my tyres are too off. As you can see, there's plenty of mill on there, but when you do get low, the harsh roads just tear them up. So that would be pushing going on it. You would probably get a wee bit of bother on the side of the road when you got told of that. So aye, that's how quickly they tear I had my tyres ordered last week, but I can see them on the way out, and uh, that's how quick it goes down like. So and you can rip full chunk shreds and all that, run the risk of having boards and severe punctures in the woods and then you've got to get call out so you want to get ahead of the game and getting them changed. Now the thing is despite the expense you have to keep legal on the road and spend the money to keep your equipment correct uh, but it does add pressure on because my tyre bill is a wee bit high now, a parts bill and I'm still waiting for payment from people so that does add to the stress because you don't want to look bad in front of these guys that you can't but mind you I did remember one time with Alec, I was tight for cash and I had to say to him, look, can I just, can you give me another couple of weeks so I get a payment in? And you know, sound enough, you speak to these people. Um, hiding and avoiding them causes a bit of drama. But if you speak to them, give them the heads up and explain the situation, they are a little more lenient. But, mm, it does add to the stress and the numbness down the arm. <laughs>
Andy, though. Hi, Toots. <laughs> right, I'm a wee bit behind schedule now. Oh, let's crack on. Get up to Sky, get this boy recovered back down the road. Right, that's your man there, but we're not really in the best bit of the road. I'm going to see if I can get in the way, but I think... Mm, plenty of room. Don't know why I was worried. Good tag down. Need to torque my wheel nuts up as well. This is a big... This could be big, like, I'm like, missing a landmark, I didn't realise it paid as well, this is great. All recovered and loaded on, now down to the central belt, got the keys. I changes with the... Actually, I've got a remote there and it also changes with an app in the phone. Yeah. I, I, I've only just had it for a couple of months. That a crowd in East Colbride called uh, um, Jim Logic did it, and in the back, white board lights up as well. And like, uh, stuff like. Well, let's be down at uh, my pal Jamie's yard. We found his wagon. I think this will get fixed tomorrow. Andy will get a wee swatch at it. I used to work with Andy at SNT. He now works in the garage here. MEN. You know what that stands for? <laughs> More adjustments needed. Right guys, as we tipped and I'm finished, I am going up the main street. One of the boys here has kindly lent me his car. Uh, I could use their wash facilities, or showers, anything I want. Uh, you find haulage firms are really good at that, especially uh, Jamie and his team here. Uh, I've known them for a while and they're always good to us. Good couple of days, new boots of the lorry. I'm trying to see if there's anything down here I could do locally tomorrow, uh, which hopefully should be too hard. I made a few phone calls and text messages waiting to hear back. Gonna get my dad up, chill out, sort tomorrow out, <sighs> get in my bed. But thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, drop a comment, and uh, subscribe if you haven't already. Oost!